Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for us to check out the front pages of a national dailies. As usual, we'll have a guest join us and help us understand uh, some of the headlines. We do have a standby, Ezekiel Nyaitok. I start off with the leadership newspaper this morning, uh, finding out what's making it, uh, what made it to the front page of the leadership newspaper. Uh, you have uh, the board caption saying, Insiders explain how security agents get black market court orders. That's on page four. Insiders explain how security agents get black market court orders. Uh, boldly written on the leadership newspaper. Uh, you have a rider. Magistrate customary court workers serves, serve as uh, merchants. The George's boys make our operation easy. And that's, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot right there. But moving away from the board caption, you also have Northern Elders give condition for prescribing bandits. It's also another interesting caption. Details are available on page four of the leadership newspaper. 40 persons killed in Niger reprisal attacks. It's on page six. And you have Anambra Pole, please deploys. 63 Mopo units. It's on page 27. Now, uh, despite the fact that there's been uh, that call to demilitarize the uh, the state and the zone, uh, so that people can actually come out, you know, to vote. Uh, you also have debt toll in Lagos building collapse rises to 29, and that's on page uh, 18 of the leadership newspaper. Citing intelligence, army blocks Abuja and Kefi Road. Again, gunmen attack Uni Abuja Secondary School, abduct vice principal. A very sad incident. Uh, you also have another caption saying, ICPC DSS arrests 48 lecturers, others over exam malpractice. Now, uh, this uh, another headline you find on page four of the leadership newspaper. But that's the much we can take on the leadership newspaper this morning. Right, so the Daily Independence newspapers, big one there, 2023, uh, 2023 general elections. It says, finally, PDP governors agreed to throw presidential ticket open. Nigeria's problem, not zoning, but getting credible candidates, says Fintiri. Also, collapsed building. I have lost two children in three months, says a victim's mother. Plateau Assembly Crisis, IGP orders posting of new police commissioner. Uni Abuja lecturer escapes death as gunmen attack campus again. And also, JAM remits 3.51 billion Naira operating surplus into Federation account. Telcos lose 20 billion Naira revenue in one year. Still on the Daily Independent, FEC OKs 47 billion Naira for contracts in aviation, works, ministries, and customs. And um, also... On the Daily Independent, Urubo demands one trillion naira reparation from federal government for oil exploration. Anambra gubernatorial polls, U.S. threatens visa ban against violence mongers. All right, let's move away from the Daily Independent and check out the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. The board caption reads, NNPC spends 864 billion naira on petrol subsidy in eight months. Remit 496 billion, skips April. Fix refineries to get it right. Uh, that's what experts quoted to say. Now, these are the writers you find underneath that bold caption. You also have Anambra Poe, U.S. threatens election riggers and troublemakers with visa ban. That's also on page 22 of uh, the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Now, there's also a breakdown of... Um, how funds have been remitted. Total amount remitted to the Federation account. You have 496.8 billion naira, which represent 36%. And you also find uh, uh, that in January, you uh, it was the funds remitted 90.86 billion naira, and in February you had 64.161 billion naira. And in March, you, uh, we had 41.18 billion naira. Now, time would actually not permit us, but that's also, you know, uh, on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Moving away from that, you also find Ikoyi building collapse, debt toll rises to 22. DMO to issue 250 billion naira succor for road projects. 
Robbers invade Quara community and rape minors. That's another sad headline you find this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. And planned demolition of Islamic City Park controversy or uh, sparks controversy in Lagos. That's on page four. It's okay to pick up a copy of the Daily Trust this morning. I hope you get all of the information. And uh, now to the Punch newspapers. Ikoi building death toll rises as Lagos probes collapse. Order and uh, pastor missing. Building project sponsors whereabouts unknown. Songwulu names survivors. It says a 15-story building plan approved, not 21, stated by Deputy Governor. Document shows. Also, Anambra decides heavy security deployment not to intimidate voters, says the IG. The U.S. threatens visa ban and others on poll violence sponsors. Army roadblocks return. Terrorists and kidnappers lay siege to the FCT. And also on the Punch Council, battle over final for feature of $899,000 found in Abuja apartment. NBA Petitions Commission and panel over Malami magistrates' roles in Odili's home raid. And uh, Pencom begins clamp down on defaulted employers, appoints recovery agents. A few others on the Punch this morning. Subsidy payment costs $864.07 billion naira in nine months, says an NNPC report. And uh, Uni Abuja invaders demand 300 million naira for abducted professors and family members. Robbers fail to find money in Quara community. Machete residents rape minors. Army can't fight terrorists and others with 579 billion naira. Chief of Army staff tells Senate. And um, I think we can stop there. Uh, Mr. Ezekiel Nyaito, good morning once again. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Good Great morning. to have you. All right, let's get you in. Um, I think we can, as always, start with the situation here in Lagos. Uh, the Lagos State Government, of course, uh, or the governor rather, was there yesterday. He has named a committee to look into the incident and, um, you know, find out exactly who should be held responsible for that uh, very, very sad disaster. Yeah, the very first thing um, I think we should... Um, Consider, I, I, I am an architect by the grace of God, and um, that issue isn't something that is rocket science. Whether you set up a committee for 30 days or two weeks or one week, one thing is certain. Number one, I don't need 24 hours to know this. Was there an approval, yes or no? For what number of flaws? Very simple, straightforward. Where there's stage approvals, that's what you need to have. You can get that within 24 hours. Where there's stage approvals. When, because in construction, you have stage, apart from the blanket approval, when it comes to construction, you have stage approvals. Where you have, was it a soil test? Did the soil test agree with the structural design that was submitted? The structural designs that were submitted, if you look, was it, was it what was built? You can get all that within 24 hours, even on the site. If that is correct, now who gave the, the, the approval for the first stage? Let's see, it must be documented. The first floor, who, before you proceed to the next floor, you must have an approval that what you've done so far is good and continue. Now, at what point, how many stages do you have for the approvals that have been given? Up to the 15th floor, where's the approval? 16th floor. So this controversy of approval was given for, 20, for 15 floors. They did 21 floors. Now, when you, for you to do a floor, to the best of my knowledge, and I think that I have good knowledge in this area, it's not something you do overnight, okay? Even when you do a prefab structure that you can put it up overnight, that was not the system deployed. So let's not get into this argument of, oh, you can get this. No, 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 no. We saw the program. I understand very well this frame structure that was used. OK, so and there was a time that there was a hold up for about three or four months. What was the reason who authorized them to go back to site? At what point did they go? These are not things, you know, there are certain technical details, okay, that you may need to look into. But I'm telling you that 24 hours of just about five people sitting down, they will tell you 
Is the ministry bring the files to me? Show me the stage approvals. That's all, number one. And who was the person? And then you can now go into what you call integrity test for the materials. It's easy. You see, what they are doing now of the excavations that uh, we, 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 we don't think strategically in things because within two hours of this event taking place, somebody should have been there at the site to look at the different floors. And because you could see them in layers like that, pick the materials in layers because once you temper with the evidence, it becomes difficult for you to know the material mix for each of the floors. Then you'll be able to have a general, but you need also the specifics. All these things are things that you can do within 48 hours. And then the rest can be prepared for prosecution in court and the technical details and everything. But I think that we, we, we don't really take professionalism seriously. And this matter, unfortunately, will continue to be the case unless we change our strategic approach to how we take governance and how we do things. I could spend the next two hours on this topic and it wouldn't be enough for me because I think there are certain things we need to interrogate. The number of lives that are lost, the question is, aside from approval process, when you go into monitoring, how many people do you have in a city like Lagos where systems, you know, buildings are coming up you know, per second, per second? If you do not have the manpower, do you have the capacity to network and outsource? There are professional bodies. Can we have professional indemnity where you have a partnership with the professional bodies such that every single construction site has an oversight that is effective. You tell me in the whole of Etiosa, you have maybe one person in charge and then working, you have four people working on that. Those are not even enough for one serious construction site. Wow. And these things are going all over. And then when it, it gets bad, and then, you see, the, the whole system is complicated. I think maybe because of that, we will talk more as we proceed. Yeah. But yeah. I feel very bad. And I think the time has come when our governance must look at ways that things should be done in the area of construction. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. These are th things going on in other places. All right, Mr. Now, Antok. when you say, let me just give this little one. When you say that, go to any typical construction site, see how they are mixing concrete. You will discover that there are these people that are just carrying sand, carrying cement, and they job mix, and they, they turn over and go. No. You take a, even when that man is honest and says in a bag of cement, maybe we're using maybe two, say four, six, or whatever they mix. The question is that bag of cement, is it a full bag of cement or it's a rebag? Rebag is something we all know about. And if it's a rebag, it means that what should have been 50 kg is actually maybe 45, if not 42. All right, Mr. What Mr. that Mr. means that your meat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my apologies. I, I think we, we would have, um, I hope that we can bring you in so we can, because the angle you, talk, you spoke about initially is very important. And that is, you know, with regards to the approval for different floors and, you know, what, what the challenge really could be in a situation like this. Um, and so I, I would like that we have an extended conversation about, um, you know, this particular um, um, issue. Um, hopefully, maybe today or tomorrow, but we'll, we'll um, get to you and let you know. We'd like to bring you in on this. Um, but let's, let's move away from it and uh, talk about the Anambra elections. It says the U.S. threatens, and that's on the Daily Independent, U.S. threatens um, visa ban against violence uh, mongers. Um, has this really ever been enough, um, you know, um, deterrent against uh, election violence in Nigeria? You see, ordinarily it would be, but you see, I hope the U.S. is not getting beaten by the Nigeria bug when it comes to speaking and doing, you know? 
we tend to think, oh, it's just um, threatening, you know, it's like going through the motions. And I, I say this with every sense of responsibility, because on several occasions, we've heard the American government, you know, you know, back hard. And yet we see it almost like the Nigerian system where the bite is um, hardly ever there. Maybe they have certain constraints, and if they have such constraints, they should let Nigerians know so that when they back, we take them serious. Uh, Nigerians are actually very, very concerned about um, visa ban. Going to U.S. is very, very important to Nigerians. So it is one tool that we think could be very, very effective. But the question is, why has it not been deployed all these days, all these years, all these times, when they talk about if there's election violence, we are going to do this, we are going to do that, and those things are done, and they set up a report, and they said there was a violence, violence there was this... Maybe they do not have the capacity to track and say anything about it. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Can go you ahead. hear me? It yes, seems my network is okay. If they have the capacity, they should back and they should bite. Luckily for us, it is their country. So if they take any action against anybody, it's their own right to so do. So I think that they should go out of their way. Whatever intelligence they need to have, they should do and really hit hard one, two, three people, you know, get that evidence and then I, I think it's an effective tool yeah but, but the, 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 the reasons why a person should not commit electoral crimes in nigeria should really not be because you can't get into the u.s it should be because of the punitive measures in nigeria by the nigerian government by the nigerian justice system not because of the u.s you know i'm a nigerian i love nigeria but I tell you, we have challenges. That's why I tell everybody coming to government, all of us that call ourselves cerebral, we call ourselves pure, we call ourselves all sorts of holy names. Come in and solve the problem. Brother, if my country is not willing to do it and another country is willing to give me a little support, I will go for that country while still hoping that in our own country, because what you've said is so correct. Why would we wait for America to threaten? That's because the Nigerian law, in one of the papers, I hope you get to that paper, they tell you of how they procure, you know, black market judgment. And unfortunately, you and I know that that smoke, na real smoke, say fire day somewhere. It's sad. But you see, running these commentaries will not be enough. We need to go step two as to how do we arrest. Nobody's afraid of the law. Just have money. You understand me? Sadly. Somebody on your station was talking about Naira Mali. On your station. And I was listening to that young guy. You know, I can't remember the program now. He was saying, why is he there for so long? These people, they know what they normally do. His lawyer is not good. And I was so infuriated. Because you were talking like a joke, you know how they do this thing, and you get better lawyer. This is Nigeria. They know how they settle this matter. What was he saying? Look for the right judge that has his prize. Give it to him. They will release the boy, and the boy will be on the street again. Why would you make such a reckless, irresponsible statement, even as a joke? We need to know where to draw lines on jokes, because this is not a joke. It's a reality we face, but for goodness sake, when will we look this reality in the eye and say it is not okay? Mm. Okay, um, let's get to the leadership newspaper then. Uh, that particular paper that talks about how security agents get black market court orders. I'd like to show your thoughts on that. My thoughts are, number one, it is, to the best of my knowledge, factual. One of my friends actually said something. Um, he's late now. He says... You don't need the man, the lawyer that knows the law. You need the lawyer that knows the way. You don't need the lawyer that knows the law. You need the lawyer that knows the way. Because go and talk all the law. Do you know that within the, the, the benches or be, within the judges, they know who is who. 
There's a man that your case is sent to his court and you're like, Mokwe, oh, I don't die. There's a lawyer that or a judge that your case goes and you're like, oh boy, we we are go get money. Oh. So your concern is not the gravity of your offense, but the depth of your pocket. Because once your price is good, bros, you are going. These are the reality that we face, and the common man just has to find a way of getting by because he knows that justice is not for him, it's for who, who can afford. I was so one of the things I was I didn't support a pre present president, but you know, every coin has its sides. The moment he won the election. One of the things I decided to look on the bright side was like, well, 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 all said, even if he does not have the capacity to move certain aspects of the economy and the situation we are in now, he is definitely going to have the capacity to sit on the fact that he will not take nonsense. That does not take too much of it. That is person. I really started encouraging myself along that line. And within a few weeks, things started to shape up. And then we now had the issue of body language, body language, body language. But, you know, you, 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 you kind of see a dog, a bulldog, you know, and you're afraid of that dog. But somewhere along the line, you start to see that it's just standing in one place for too long. And then you try to test with a little stuff. I discover that it's not working. You do. A time comes when you go to that bulldog that you, and actually rob that dog and nothing happens. So that is no longer that thing that you fear so much. It becomes a, something that you toy with. So I think that uh, for where we are now, we really need a leader who is concerned and willing to risk his life. That's what leadership is. You are paid to lay down your life. That's why, that's why you're handsomely rewarded. That's why the office is filled with so much pecs and paraphernalia and power and everything because they say a man who is laying down his life needs to be at least appreciated but you get in there and you think that that office is for you to enjoy we will not spend billions of taxpayers money to elect you for for, for it to be a present to you to be a gift to you we're electing you to lay down your life and i think that in my time that leader will come i can right. say that for a fact all right, and now to Abuja, where um, it's reported on the uh, daily, on the punches board. It says, army uh, roadblocks return as terrorists and kidnappers lay siege to the FCT. I'm sure you must have followed the story of the University of Abuja lecturers uh, uh, that were kidnapped. Um, it's uh, on one of the papers this morning that is a 300 million naira uh, ransom demand. I believe I also saw that some, you know, somebody may have been released. Um, so let's have your view on that one. It seems like My the FCT view, is the new, is the new, um, you know, hot spot. You see, it's no rocket science for you to know that secrecy is the breeding place for evil. When you know that you will not be seen, you can do anything. Either you will not be seen, or if you are seen, nothing happens. These two things, they are those that encourage you to do anything, to be very brazen. But when you know that you will be seen, and when you are seen, you go in for it. For instance, any shop that they write, beware of cameras. Just the fact that you don't know who is looking do you understand me? You behave yourself. And today, in the world of today, the military, the security operatives are believing that roadblock is the answer. How do you expect a man that carries weapon, that carries stuff, sees a long queue, he's waiting until you get to him, and then you check him and catch him, Goodness sake, that is just so daft, pardon my language. But when you employ drones, surveillance, intel, where you don't know who is who, likelihood is that you will be deterred. My brother is just commonsensical. You go and block the road and see the hold up. All the honest people that were going to do their businesses, 
And please, at the end of the day, tell me one person in the court, outside of seeing somebody that the car is rickety and you intimidate the person and collect money. Yeah, but please, I, mean, I, I think, I think the, the, the biggest you know, part of the conversation is you know, the fact that the FCT seems to be the new hotspot for kidnappers. You know, it's, it's no longer you know, the, you know, a safe space. I said it before. You test the waters and discover that the bulldog is toothless. So you go where the value is higher. The value is not higher in Kefi or in Tamadamaturu. The highest value, where they, the key the KV is highest, is in the FCT. And these guys have tested the waters and discovered that the bulldog has no teeth. The time has come when our leaders in government need to just call a few sharp brains. What does it take for you to fly drones, cover every part of Abuja with drones? You see, I'm praying that God makes me the governor of a quiet bomb state. I think people will understand what security means. For next to nothing, the army has come to say that 400 and something billion is grossly inadequate for them. Yeah. I want to ask, what is the cost of a super drone that has a, maybe a kilometer site range? And this thing, you buy 1,000 of them. Empower IT boys. Have a network that is not announced, is not known. And these things are just flying. You don't know where it's coming from. They are just flying. And then... Luckily, God will help us on one day as they are flying. They are able to spot a particular operation and they run that operation live. As the people are running, the drone is following, is zooming in on them. It's on the social media. Everybody's... All of a sudden, these people will say, oh boy, Nigeria, they don't change the method or make we leave these people alone. My brother, what is so, what is so high, what is so elevated about what I've just said? Nothing, absolute nothing. But how much is the cost of a drone? That is not good enough. Where contracts come in is Nigeria's field of play in governance. The one where there is contract. The one where there is money. The one where there is that is so their own mindset is not about solving the problems. It's more about how can we milk the situation. Yes. What I've just said. What is so difficult to saturate Abuja with drones? Yeah, well, nothing. Absolutely uh, nothing. Talk, I think the, the challenge, because I, I know Messi wants to jump in here, but I, I think the challenge is, you know, if you fill the whole of Abuja with drones, what are you going to do in Benin? What are you going to do in Benue? What are you going to do in, in different other cities across the country? What, drones what can't be the, the answer. What and and, the and not to also, you know, fail to mention that even those who would be, you know, operating this drone, I mean, we also have the issue of welfare. We also have the fact that... Uh, what you know knowledge do they have about you know operating some of the devices because if you no, constantly no, look at it, no, the fact that, uh, no no i'm Nigeria. just saying that yes it's a brilliant idea but on the other hand uh, it goes beyond just having drones i mean let's also look at one of the reasons why you constantly have you know police officers uh, taking monies and the welfare of the people and they're well taken care of that's also another issue we should be looking at to boost the morale of these persons who have to be out there you know, I said something about Mr. President being well paid because he's laying down his life. He's supposed to lay down his life for the people. That argument applies to the army, to the police, to the forces. We have the money, relatively, but these monies are not getting into where they should. They are not getting into the, to the operation. They are getting to the bosses, the heads of these agencies, to the best of my knowledge, are so stupendously rich because when you look at each budget and you look at the deployment of the budget, how do they go? You see, let me say this. I had on my 58th birthday on, 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 on November 1 on Monday, I had education colloquium. And one of the things that came out from, from, from one of the guests was that his mother is Polish. And in the, in the Polish education system, you are expected to learn one language in primary school. Just like you learn French or this or that, you are expected to learn one of the computer languages. So by the time they get into secondary school, they are so good, all this Java and the rest programming that 
the secondary school children are doing work and earning more money than even their parents. What do I mean? If we move into the new reality, the fourth, um, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, industrial revolution, we'll discover that the way of the future is education, is ICT, is knowledge, so that all you need to do is have an online network of your agents that nobody knows, and little children are manning your drones and setting them up and getting this. This is the way of the future. 10 years down the line, we will revisit what I've just said today and we'll discover that that is the answer. There is no other answer. There is a solution and that is a solution. If it takes us 10 years to come to what I've just said, so be it. But this can start from this administration now. Revisit our educational curriculum, go into ICT and okay. let in for Intel and ICT run our systems for us. It's the most effective globally. All right. Uh, so for the want of time, let's quickly see if we can show your thoughts on this. NMPC says uh, they spend 864 billion naira on petrol subsidy in eight months. And of course, uh, the, the federal government is saying comp 2022, we will sustain for about six months and then there will be deregulation of the downstream sector. Let's quickly show your thoughts on that. My thoughts have been consistent over the years, right from the days of PDP. One of the biggest frauds in this country against the poor is subsidy. One of the biggest frauds against the poor in this country is subsidy. You are not subsidizing the poor. You are taking the money of the poor and giving to the rich. Do you know what 800 billion means in eight months? That is 100 billion per month. Do you know what 100 billion can do for the poor? I'm doing an estate, give me one billion, and I'll tell you how many people I will employ. We're talking of a hundred billion per month. That means you're talking of over three billion per state per month. Three billion per month. You carry three billion and bring to Aquaibum, and you give it to me to empower the young people, carry the price of petrol and put at any amount. These people will generate the income to be able to pay and sustain. But you are carrying this money. I sit here with all due respect. I have nothing less than three, four, five SUVs. The amount of petrol I consume in a week is more than what my whole village consumes in a month. And you are telling me you are subsidizing my poor people in the village. You are not. You are subsidizing Yaitok and his, 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 his class of people that own fleets of, of, of vehicles, com corporate companies that have thousands of vehicles. You are subsidizing them. You are doing fraud of what we don't know who is bringing in, what is bringing in, uh, the amount we are consuming. Give me a billion per month and Aquaibon people will pay 200, 300, 400 naira per liter because they have businesses that generate much more than that. Go to MSMEs, supply that money in that, empower the people and they will live the life. You are not empowering them. You are empowering the poor. You are doing corruption, and then you are using the name of the... Why have the, the, the APC government not be able to stop it? Because they know that this is a field of play for the big boys, in my, in my opinion. I hope I'm wrong. I pray I'm wrong. But they know what the fact is. Now, when you're about to leave office, that's when you're going to you know, think about it. The other people come in like, you finish chopping, don't clean out, finish. Now you won't come stop us from chopping. Stop, start it now. Tell us, let's have a conversation. What is actually the landed price? Number two, what is the real consumption? Number three, what is the effect on subsidy? If we are to do rail in, in Nigeria, now what will the cost go like? How does the poor man really benefit? A man who uses four liters for his small generator for one week. And you tell me that is what you have subsidized him with. Please, right. let's be honest with ourselves. We are not, we are using the poor uh, and, and we are ripping them off and we are, we are... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Yai Tok, <laughs> thank you very much for your time this morning. Uh, as always, Thursday is uh, very interesting speaking with you. We wish you a very beautiful day ahead. Thank you. I think All we may have lost him. Okay. So we probably step on the brakes now and when we return, we'll definitely uh, come through with what happened today in history where Bar Barack Obama was elected first uh, black American president. Please stick around. <laughs>